Hello everybody, welcome back to our discussion on OpenFoam and today we want to talk about more about refinement in the last video we talked about refinement surfaces and we have seen that we can use a surface such as this cylinder and refine it uh, to a minimum and maximum level so I've explained that in the previous video so next thing we want to look at mm -hmm, next thing we want to look at is probably this thing called region-wise refinement now you'll notice in this uh, entry all these are comments because they have two forward slashes as usual but uh, this entry here is known as refinement regions so what this does is that it takes a region for example a box and they name it refinement box here now where have we seen refinement box before if we just scroll up a little bit you'll see that uh, in the geometry file Yeah, so you see this box here, it says refinement box, uh, this is actually a geometry and to define this refinement box you give it the coordinates with the minimum x, y and z coordinates and then the maximum x, y and z coordinates. So that will kind of determine the, the parameters of the box. Now you can just leave it down there because we kind of don't want this extra you know, refinement surface so to speak. Or refinement uh, region so very simply for, simply for us we can either comment or we can just delete so I'm just going to press escape I'm just going to press DD a few times two three four five so for now we don't really want to look at this thing called refinement regions just yet because uh, that gives us okay for example we can actually specify let's say we want this part to be more heavily refined if you have some if you have some weird shapes down here like this and okay some funny funny weird shape that you want to uh, have a finer resolution in this particular region you can use the refinement region entry so for example you can draw a box you can draw any shape you want you can even use a, another STL file to help you determine where this refinement region is so that's not a that's not a problem at all now yeah now next thing well we want to try and run this thing and we're going to try and run this thing and see what happens so I'm just going to write and I'm going to quit and let's run snappy hex mesh and let's see what happens So we have surface uh, refinement iterations. So we have up to the fourth and fifth iteration. Okay, we have shell refinement still. Refinement iteration one, two, three, and see. We don't have very much more uh, iterations, and it's going much faster than before, because the last time it took about forty-ish minutes. And if you consider the first setting, it will have taken even longer than uh, 40 minutes. Alright. So it's doing all the iterations. Again, we don't need to exactly know what all these are. We can talk about these uh, things one at a time as we change each of these settings. And we see that instead of taking 40 minutes, it takes less than one minute. Perhaps because we took up that refinement box, which you know, gives us an extra region to refine. So let's take a look at the snappy pipe dot form. And okay, yeah, it's taking a while to delete. So not to worry. Maybe I should just restart Paraview. Yeah, I should wait for this lagging thing to finish. So I'll close it first. All right. Let's go and start Paraview again. Paraview 5.6. And I want to look at uh, Snappy Pipe and Snappy Pipe Foam. And let's see what happens. Okay, it's a lot easier to apply now. So let's take a look at Snappy Pipe Foam and we'll just apply axis as usual. 
where is this axis uh, you look at the properties and then you look at axis grid and then you just press yeah okay. remember there's an axis somewhere data axis grid sorry so that will give you the x y and z axis now look at the castellated mesh it's uh, generated a very coarse-ish mesh and some funny edges at the surface because things won't cut off properly over there. Probably we need more refinement levels so to speak instead of just two levels, maybe one three. Now if we look at the next time step, okay, we see that the open foam tries to snap all these uh, to the surface. So you, you look at the curve part, look at the curve part before and after. So this is just the castellated mesh where uh, we start to uh, just have the blocks and the refinement that we were talking about earlier. But uh, it's still not smooth, right? It's not a smooth cylinder surface. <coughs> so, <coughs> so remember in the last video we talked about uh, we talk about refinements. Yeah, we talk about refinements and how how we talk about open foam selecting certain cells or certain boxes to to select to have a kind of a crude approximation of the shape but uh, in the end of the day it's still going to be like a few boxes the shape is going to be like boxes and it's still not a smooth following of this red line for example all right so what open foam has to do is to do something called snapping so if let's say this is your shape and this was your cell after the refinement what open foam will try and do is to make the cell follow this so that is what snapping is about that is the second step so you can notice in this next time step this next time step that the surface of the curve part is a lot smoother however at the edges can you see at the edges yeah at the edges is still looking kind of uh, goofy so we may need well probably some refinement settings especially at the edges yeah so when we look at the other side it's also the same thing as you can see so uh, what we're we gonna do yeah going to vi system snappy hex mesh dict let's give it a little more refinement so let's put a level 4 refinement for example so it might take a bit longer but it should give us it should give us the shape that we want so let's run snappy hex mesh again so it's going to give us four four levels of refinement so that's iteration one So we have three iterations. So this time it's going to take a little longer, <laughs> but we can be sure that the resolution is going to be better. So you see the surface uh, refinement iterations might go is gonna take sort of a while. Okay, so I might want to pause the video, you know, just to you know, not pause the video. Fast forward, fast forward, and hence pause the recording, just to see uh, how this refining of the castellated mesh will turn out in the end or maybe not you know what I'll, I'll just explain just want to explain again while it's running so just a summary okay first you have let's say boxes which is your original block mesh kind of thing so let's say you have a grid like this and you have a surface okay and this here is the inside of the surface 
So what open foam will do first, it will say, okay, this, this guy is completely inside, so no problem. Problem comes when this is here. So castellated mesh will say, okay, this is inside. But it's looking at this one, it says it's not really inside or outside. These three cells, one, two, and three, they're, they're a little bit of the surface inside, a little bit of the surface outside. So what open foam will do is to start refining. And that's still part of the castellated meshing. Uh, you try and refine this one as well. Now this is the first level of refinement. And remember in 3D it does uh, uh, 8. Uh, cuts the cube into 8. So this one is in. This one is in. And this one is in. And this one is mostly in. This one is mostly in. Uh, this one is like half in and half out, so there's some, uh, some, uh, what do you call that? Yeah, uh, discrepancy. So, with castellated mesh, uh, what we end up with? Okay, what we end up with is just a shape looking very much like that. That's why we see the very blocky diagrams. So this is what our mesh will start to look like. Okay, it's going to cover all these surfaces, right? Based on the refinements. So if we if we increase the level, it's going to follow the shape a bit more closely, right? Then I can draw smaller and smaller squares to kind of approximate the surface. Um, and then the next step is to snap it to the surface. Okay, it will try to follow the curvature of the surface, get all these cells to follow the curvature. But of course, you need your, you need this uh, basic blocky kind of a uh, blocky cells to actually uh, fit close enough to the surface for the snapping to work properly. So that's one of the challenges of getting uh, this snappy hex mesh right. So yeah, it looks like it will still take a while. Yeah, I just press enter a few times. Uh, look, so many edges. Yeah, so uh, this time it's going to be way more fine, this uh, refining process. And yeah, we should have a much smoother surface from then on. So I'm going to fast forward. And okay guys, we are done with our meshing. Uh, it's done in about 600 seconds. This is, uh, this is uh, about 10-ish minutes. Pretty reasonable timing. Yeah. So I'm gonna get snappy pipe foam again. Yeah, I'm gonna get snappy pipe foam again. Hey, hey. And it's going to take a while to load. Okay, look at the cylinder. Time 0 0.01. Okay, look at the castellated mesh, which is pre-snap. Did you see my response? Yeah, look at the castellated mesh. It's much finer. So the blocks are much smaller. If you look at the wireframe, so this is what refinement does. See? Uh, lots of uh, the mesh becomes very 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 small as you can see here and uh, if we just do uh, 0 0.01 so uh, we'll wait for it to load okay look at this we have a very fine mesh here okay and overall if you look at the surface the surface is very very smooth okay of course, at the edges, at the edges, there are some defects, like over here. Because snappy hex mesh is a little, well, rough on the edges, so to speak. But honestly, uh, yeah, honestly, that may be, yeah, um, yeah, that may be something we have to deal with later on. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time, perhaps uh, to discuss. How to get a simulation running and other features of Snappy Hex Mesh. See you again.